In this video, I'm going to go over how to write proofs that a function is one-to-one -one and or onto. Before we get into that, let's refresh our memory on what a function actually is. So a function is a rule that compares two sets where we have a domain, which are the inputs to the function, and we have a codomain, which are the potential outputs of the function. And to be a function, this rule has to assign each element of the domain a unique element in the codomain. And each element in the domain is associated with exactly one element in the domain. And this has to be true in order for it to be a function in the first place. Now, one additional property that a function might have that we're interested in is called being onto. That's also sometimes referred to as surjective, but I'll continue to use the word onto in this video. Now, what that means is that if we look at our arrows, the, we see that every element of the codomain has at least one arrow pointing to it. So that's what it means for a function to be surjective. And one way to think about that is that for every element of the codomain, for every little v in capital V, there exists some u, so we can think about tracing all of these arrows backwards, there's some little u in the domain for which we get that little v. Now to help us understand what onto means, let's practice what we would do if we needed to show that a certain function was not onto. So onto here means for every little v in my codomain, so that z is this z, there exists some little u in my domain, so that z is this z, for which f of u equals v. So to show that this doesn't happen, we would have to find some little v in my codomain for which there is no u, for which there does not exist a little u in my domain with f of u equaling v. In other words, an output, something in my codomain that I can't ever get by plugging anything into my function. Well, to try to find it, let's just start plugging values into our function and seeing what happens. f of 0 is 3, f of 1 is 5, f of 2 is 7, f of negative 1 is positive 1, f of negative 2 is negative 1, and we might notice that all of those values are all odd, which might lead us to believe that if we picked an even number in my codomain, that maybe I'm not able to get that out as an output for my function. And so that turns out to be the key to finding our counterexample. So for example, I could say let v equal 6. If v is 6, then f of u equals 6 would mean that 2u plus 3 would equal 6, which means 2u equals 3, which means u is 3 halves. And that's not an integer. But that's what we would have to plug into this function in order to get 6 as an output, and so that's why f is not onto. So to show that a function is not onto, you have to find something in the codomain for which there is no possible domain element that gives you that codomain element as the result of plugging into the function. Now to prove that a function is onto, we need to once again remember the definition of onto, which is that for every little v in my codomain, which in this case is z again, there exists a little u in my domain, which this time is z cross z, ordered pairs of integers, with f of u equaling v. Now, because this is something that we want to prove about every little v in z, we're going to start our proof with let little v be in z. And our goal now is to find something in my domain. My domain is z cross z, which means I'm looking for a pair of integers, x comma y, with f of x comma y equaling v. Well, f of x comma y, if I look at my formula, that's just going to be x plus y. And so I'm looking for a pair of integers that add up to v. Now, I don't know what v is, but there are still a couple ways that I could think to do that. For example, maybe I pick the integers v and 0. So in my proof, I might say, now v comma 0 really is in my domain. It's in z cross z. Why is that? Well, because v and 0 are both integers. And not only is that ordered pair in my domain, also, if I plug that into my function, f of v comma 0 
is by my formula v plus zero, which works out to be v. So I've done what I set out to do. I found something in my domain such that when I plug that into my function, I get the thing that I wanted in my codomain. So that's it. So onto proofs can be deceptively short sometimes, but hopefully you follow the logic there. Now, another property of functions that we often care about is one-to-one -one or injective. I'll continue to say one-to-one -one in this video, but you may see the word injective. So what does that mean? It means that again, if I look at my codomain elements, what we see this time is that every one of these dots in my codomain has at most one arrow pointing to it. That's the result of plugging at most one input into my function. And so f is one-to-one, -one, thinking about it this way, means that if I take two different domain elements and plug them into my function, maybe this is my u1 and this is my u2, if I plug in different inputs, I get different outputs. If u1 is not equal to u2, then f of u1 is not equal to f of u2. So just like before, let's try to understand what this property means by finding a, a function that is not one-to-one. -one. So why would the function from z to z given by f of x equals x squared not be a one-to-one -one function? Well, remember, one-to-one -one means that for every u1 and u2 in my domain, in this case, that's z, if u1 does not equal u2, then f of u1 does not equal f of u2. So to show that a function is not one-to-one, -one, we need to find a counterexample. So we need to find a u1 and a u2 that are both integers, with the hypothesis being true, which would mean that u1 is not equal to u2, and the conclusion being false, which means that f of u1 actually does equal f of u2. So can we think of two different integers, but when we square them, we get the same result. And so hopefully you might know that there's lots of examples of this. So for example, u1 equals 2, u2 equals negative 2, but f of 2 is 2 squared, which is 4, and f of negative 2 is negative 2 squared, which is also 4. So this would be my counterexample to show that this function is not 1 to 1. Now let's think about how we would go about proving that a function is 1 to 1. So again, let's re remember the definition, which is that for every u1 and u2 in my domain, which again is z here, if u1 is not equal to u2, then f of u1 is not equal to f of u2. And if we try to use a normal direct proof here, our hypothesis would be that u1 is not equal to u2. And then the conclusion that we would be working towards would be that f of u1 is not equal to f of u2. But it's hard to prove a negative. It's hard to prove that something doesn't happen, that two numbers aren't equal. So typically what we do almost always when we're working with proof of one to one is we use the contrapositive of that if then statement. So the contrapositive is if f of u1 does equal f of u2, then u1 equals u2. And that's going to turn out to be a lot more effective in terms of actually writing this proof. So our proof is going to start with let u1 and u2 be in my domain with f of u1 equaling f of u2. And then my goal is to prove that u1 equals u2. Okay, so what do we know when we say that f of u1 is equal to f of u2? Well, we're using our formula here. Our formula is that f of x is 5x plus 7. So this is going to be 5u1 plus 7 is equaling 5u2 plus 7. And now we can just do some algebra. We can subtract 7 from both sides. That gives us 5u1 equals 5u2. And then we can divide both sides by 5. And that gives us u1 equals u2 as desired. And so that's what our proof of 1 to 1 is going to look like. Again, it's going to use the contrapositive. If f of u1 equals f of u2, then u1 equals u2. So finally, you might find these templates useful for writing your own proofs of functions being 1 to 1 and onto. So remember that when we're proving that a function is 1 to 1, we use the contrapositive. So we start by assuming that f of a1 equals f of a2, and we try to prove that a1 equals a2. And then for proofs that onto, we do it in the way that we demonstrated, which is we pick something out of the codomain, a generic arbitrary element of the codomain, and then we try to find an element of the domain that gives us that codomain element as a result when we plug it into our function. So follow along with the examples in this video. Hopefully this helped you write your own proofs involving one-to-one -one and onto. Good luck.